Several food companies are considering changes to their products after facing mounting pressure on social media over racist roots in their branding. These include ConAgra's Mrs. Butterworth's Mars Uncle Ben's brand and PepsiCo's Aunt Jemima. Joining us now to talk about this issue, Dr. Joseph Flynn. He's an associate director of the Center for Black Studies at Northern Illinois University. Let's start with this, doctor. A brief history lesson. What are the origin, the roots behind these brands? Uh, well, these brands um, were coming out with these uh, images um, all the way back in the uh, late 1800s after the fall of slavery. And uh, racist images were circulating through popular culture um, precipitously at that time. And unfortunately, there have been revisions to those images. So if you look at the history of Aunt Jemima, you see her uh, take different iterations all the way to slightly changing her skin color, uh, you know, uh, making her a little thinner, so on and so forth. But still, the roots of, of the images come from the same place. And, convey the same messages. As you and I were talking, uh, this has been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years. Why does it take the unfortunate death of a black man for these companies to finally make changes? Well, um, I do give um, credence and, and respect to the companies for finally coming to the table and recognizing the pain and frustration that millions of people have had over, over, over a century. Um, but I don't think that most folks out there really understand and fully appreciate how racist images like Aunt Jemima or Uncle Ben or Mrs. Butterworth or Rastus from um, uh, Cream of Wheat really are, uh, nor the roots of those images and, and what they really mean to the larger society. So at, at this moment, with so much protest and frustration about systemic racism, now is the time, <laughs> now is a great time to take opportunity of the moment and get on the right side of history and, and begin to think about how we actually represent historically marginalized groups like African Americans, indigenous Americans and others. I'm just waiting for sports teams to uh, begin to have this conversation as well. The Indians and things like that. Do, do, that doc, doctor, do you think that these companies uh, directly, purposely uh, came out with these labels, these brands, these images as a nod uh, to try and get people, I don't want to say an homage, but like Got a curry favor to a time that was once upon a time? Um, well, considering that um, many of these images were created back in the 1800s, I don't think so. Um, and I think that once um, their brands began to take off and become successful and these images were attached to their brand, um, it just became second nature, uh, despite any kind of um, protest from different uh, civil rights organizations and um, black activism organizations. So the, the notion that it's a tip of the hat or it's, it's a show of respect, I, I, you know, that, that, I think that you know, stretches logic and, and truth. Dr. Flynn, is this too little too late? Um, well, that's a great question. I don't think it's ever too late. Um, and I think this is just one step in a much larger series of steps that our society has to take in terms of rethinking about our past practices and how they've had an impact on different communities. Um, I, I don't want to be controvers too controversial, but I will say that just because something isn't found offensive by the white community of the nation doesn't necessarily mean it's not insulting. And we have to begin to think about how people feel um, because this makes you feel like an outsider. It's, it's kind of painful, uh, quietly painful to go to a grocery store to buy breakfast products and, you know, you reach for the pancake mix and it's a classic mammy stereotype staring at you in the face. It's, it's amazing that it took until 2020 for this to change. Dr. Flynn, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation.